Evening everyone. Um, ably assisted by uh, my colleague Clem, uh, who's just going to drive the slides so I can just stand out the front and, uh, and speak to you. Can anyone hear me okay? I'm just conscious I've not got the microphone uh, in front of me. Um, so, uh, thanks all for coming, uh, as David said. I'm here to talk to you about the civil money claims uh, service. Um, just to show of hands, are you alright? Can you hear me there at the back? Yeah. Um, just to show of hands, um, East Millie, who works currently within the civil money claims sort of jurisdiction deals with civil money claims? Hand for yeah? Okay. So, um, what I'm going to do is just, I've just got a few slides, just some facts and figures, what we've been doing to date, what our plans are for the future. And then what I'll do, I'll actually get the service up on the screen and I'll just take the screen. We'll put ourselves in the uh, five in the shoes of a user, a uh, claimant actually using the service, and we'll go through and we'll actually see how fast we improve this uh, civil money claim services. I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, I'll then hand over to my colleague uh, Jeff, who will talk to you uh, briefly around civil enforcement and what the plans are for civil enforcement uh, going forward over the next uh, year or so. Um, and then it's question and answer sessions at the end. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Excellent. So OCMC then, online civil money claims. Um, civil money claims, online. Um, we've got a project vision. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the um, Lord Justice Briggs review, a uh, couple of years old now. Um, we are taking recommendations from that review and we're looking to build this online court. We're a long way away from the online court. Uh, we have been going for just under 12 months now, the civil money claims service. Uh, and we are a long way from truly realising this online court. But as you'll see, um, some of the facts and figures that I'll be showing you, we have, we have made a real good start, I think. <clears throat> any idea how many civil money claims are issued nationally within England and Wales each year? Thereabouts. 1.7 million, I think it was the last financial year. So you can imagine it's a real meaty piece of work to get all these civil money claims within our service. Um, we're not there yet, we've got a small proportion of them, but we need to start off small, make sure we get that right and then build, build the service out. So our project vision is a digital first service that will allow a user to resolve money disputes in a simple, accessible and proportionate way. And that's what we're looking to achieve. Next slide please. <clears throat> so our aims, the main aims of the service, improve signposting and guidance, we currently we started uh, and we're currently focusing on our litigants in person, so non legally represented uh, litigants. And it can be really confusing. You know, the guidance notes, the M1 guidance notes, the M1 form itself. Money claims online, if anyone's familiar with that. 27 page user guide for a, a litigant in person. If that was me, I'd be completely cut off, to be honest. And what we're trying to do is improve that signposting guidance and really make that access to justice a lot simpler uh, for these individuals. We're looking to provide an end-to-end -end digital service for court users so they can start the money claim, they can respond to the money claim, they can progress the claim online on the case progression elements, and for members of the judiciary to enable them to determine the case either on the papers digitally um, or by way of video or physical data, <coughs> our ultimate aim. Uh, finally, improve access to justice for litigants in person by making the rules less complicated Simplifying the procedure and the rules that we do have will be embedded within the system to make, to make their lives a whole lot easier. That means to get the white book out the procedure rules and click through uh, and, and work out what it is they need to do. So that's our aims. Next slide, please, Glenn. So we actually moved into public beta. Now, public beta basically means we're still a sort of pilot service, but we are publicly available on GovUK. Um, and we became publicly, publicly available um, on the 26th of March last year, so just under 12 months ago. Um, we'll be celebrating our first birthday in a few weeks' time. Um, we've currently gone live um, for litigant in person, specified money claims, non legally represented, um, for a specified money claim of £10,000. To date, we've had 54,000 of thereabouts um, claims issued through the new online service. I use the satisfaction rate, the way we measure that at the end of the user's journey. So if the user has issued the claim or the user has responded to the claim, we do invite them to give us feedback on the, on the experience and we can use that feedback to further improve the service and you know, we can read that feedback and take it on board and we will improve. 88% of those users are telling us that they're satisfied or highly satisfied with the service that we're currently providing. We're collecting protected characteristics data um, so we can make sure that the service is accessible and it's all inclusive um, for all members of society. 
Um, and we focus in on feature releases. So we started off initially just with issue and the defense response, which is the most common type of response. Well, after no response, it's the, it's the second most type of response. Um, we then released admissions, part admissions into the journey. So we slowly build in uh, the features up until we get to that full end-to-end -end civil money claims journey. We've also uh, increased, sorry, just back a second. Uh, we've also increased defendant engagement early, early on. Um, our defendant engagement rate is 35%. Uh, currently, so 35% of defendants out of the 54,000 claims actually engage with the service. Compare that to paper, which is 31%, and SDT, any SDT users in here, so these, yeah, I think your engagement rate is around 4% or something like that. Now, very different type of users, we've not even looked at SDT users yet, um, but defendant engagement in SDT is around 4% currently. So 35%, you know, is quite a good, um, a good Thing to celebrate, we think. As well as our public beta service, we've also got a private beta service. The private beta is a closed pilot, it's not yet publicly available, but that's for um, lit uh, legal professionals such as yourselves. Is anyone actually using our private beta service within the room? Okay, um, our private beta service, it currently allows, um, so you've got that claim, limitations up, you run to us send somebody to run to the court, five to four, please can you issue this, uh, and then we'll serve you, I think, three months or, or whatever it is to serve. This service allows uh, legal professionals to actually issue these claims when limitation is up, issue it on, uh, online, and then actually um, serve the papers themselves. So we've currently uh, worked with 10 firms across the country, across England and Wales. 227 solicitors are currently signed up to use this service. And we've taken, you can see there, just over 2,800 claims. As of the end of February, so I'm sure it's well, way over 3,000 now. Um, we are, like I said, we've only got to the issue stage. Our focus very much is litigating in person and building this service out. We will, uh, later on this year, um, start engaging with legal professionals and look to expand this service as well. We treat you now um, advertisements of service, tickets of service, response. Um, responses, etc. So, how the services work, how it has been working, and how it will work in the future, we're building the service actually by speaking to the users who use it, as opposed to traditionally HMCTS saying, okay, there you go, there's call, go ahead and use that. But you really can't use it. Well, here's a 25-page user guide, work how to use it yourself. Um, we, we do actually go along, we speak to users who've been through the uh, Civil Money Claims Service previously, be on paper, be on MCOL, and we have to bring them in, we speak to them, we try the service at a dummy service if you like with them, get their feedback, and then actually iterate and improve the product based on that feedback. As well as all the feedback we get from the user satisfaction surveys when users are you know, actually going through it and issuing or responding to live claims. Case management, obviously a key part. Uh, within the legal professional service, uh, the user is able to log in, they can see a dashboard, and they can see every single case um, that they have currently uh, have issued. And our future plans is to build that platform to expand that, so within a particular office, you can see all the claims that have been issued within that particular office. We've got various different tech components we need to develop to make that so, but that's our sort of future plans. Okay. The benefits of the new service for legal professionals and for the litigants in person, accessible 24 hours a day. Um, you know, we, we, have, we do get claims issued in the early hours of the morning, uh, cases responded to in the early, early hours of the morning, etc. Being issued digitally, not by post, reduces paper, as David said earlier in his opening remarks, you know, paper, inbuilt plays, <coughs> that paper can get lost, get lost in the post, but can be in the claim form, I never receive that claim form. Um, it, it's, um, issued digitally. So obviously benefits there for the, the individuals, for us as HMCTS and the environment clearly. Simple language and layout, which we'll see. I'll let you make up your own minds uh, on that, but certainly from a litigate in person perspective, we have really simplified that language to make it less sort of daunting and, and more easy for them to understand. The case management, and we also be using um, a facility called GovNotify, which once a claim is issued, 
A notification email will be sent to the defendant to tell them that that claim has been issued. Now, as a result of that, we still can't have a within our civil procedure rules, so it has to be a uh, postal service. However, because of the use of government notify, I think it was Easter last year, we had a claim that was issued and settled within two hours, and that was on Easter Sunday, I think. You know, it was still five days for service of the paper claim. Um, because of this, Gov Notify, um, piece of technology was introduced, um, we are seeing a lot quicker engagement and resolution to some of these cases. So, we, uh, as I said, we designed the surveys based on the feedback and we changed um, you know, around what the users are actually telling us. We also uh, look, so we do have a, a dedicated team actually supporting our customers who are using this service. We also look at the email traffic that they're getting from customers. We look at the calls. Every call is kind of logged and uh, categorised. We look at all um, we look at all this data. We analyse that and we say, okay, well, if people are calling us about that, then maybe we can do something different in the service to save them having to then contact us. We can improve that journey that way. Our next steps: we're looking to introduce legal advisors into the service um, later this year. Um, initially, it will just be a pilot uh, for defending claims up to £300. We'll be referred to a legal advisor to give allocation directions. Um, so that's something uh, we're looking forward to and work on currently. Small claims mediation service currently exists. Really successful when people opt into small claims mediation. I think it's around 66-67% um, settlement rate. What we're going to um, pilot again um, in a few months is Small claims up to £300 automatically opt them in for mediation. The user will have the option to opt out, but we're hoping that you know, uh, people sort of being driven down that road will result in more cases uh, being settled. We're only starting off small, see how it works. If it doesn't work, you know, obviously we'll try something else. If it is successful, we'll seek to expand that as well. Decision tree, so we've been working with our judicial colleagues. Um, this decision tree so is basically to help the um, it's helped the litigants in person actually construct and categorise and come up with a really um, sort of good and easy to follow particular claim. And then the alternative dispute resolution all around the signposting guidance, pointing people in the right uh, direction. We've been working with uh, MLJ policy colleagues on that area as well. Some of the things we're working on as well is building the service out to include more type of claims start bringing in higher value claims, start bringing in the case management aspects, etc. So that's what we've been up to. That's our plans for the next 12 months. What I'd like to do now is actually give you a demonstration of the service itself. <coughs> yep, does that help? Has anyone used the service? I've been on just curious to, to take a look. Anyone been to any of these presentations before? I think I recognise a few um, faces in the room. Um, <clears throat> so I'll show you where we're at currently. So this is, if you go into Google and you search make a money claim, you'll be directed to uh, WK pages. And the first thing you'll be asked is a few um, eligible numbers. Make sure you are a legal person, that your claim's under £10,000, etc. If it's over £10,000, you'll be directed to paper or to MCOL as appropriate. If you um, meet the eligibility for our service, civil money claim service, you'll be taken to the, um, to the page here. So as a user, you can see straight away, it's under the Gov UK branding, um, just up at the top of the page. It's out a lot simpler. There's hyperlinks wherever you see the blue text, so you'll have to pay a fee. No need to go to that EX50 and try and work out how much your fee is gonna be, etc. You can see everything there up front and make your decision And then once you've been through, I think that this is the eligibility questions, isn't it? Um, so once you've been through the eligibility, you've decided, yes, I want to go ahead and issue that claim. You'll obviously register, email, password as you'd expect. And that will take you to your task list. So this is what you'll see as a claimant um, wanting to issue a money claim. And you can see... For me, it's really nicely set out, definitely compared to MCOL, if anyone's seen that, certainly compared to the N1 claim form. And basically what our task is, is to work through each of the, um, the sections you can see here, um, and then ultimately pay for and submit um, our claim. 
So first of all, resolving this dispute. So this is just to advise users that before you bring this claim, you should talk to the other people, you should uh, talk to the other person or the organisation, consider mediation. You can um, tell them that you know why you intend it. It's all the pre-action stuff that, that the users need to need to follow. And what we do find, what we can find, I mean, with no real hard and fast evidence, but what we have seen is some of our users have actually registered. We can see that they've read and confirmed that they've read this page and then not gone on to the sure money claim. So we can only assume that they've read this, thought, actually, I've not done that, let me go away and do that. And that's been successful because we've never seen them come back and actually complete an issue, issue that money claim. So they confirm that they've read that, and we'll see back to the task list that that task has now been complete, and now they start to build up the claim itself. So the first section, your details. It's about you and this claim. No mention of the word claimant in there, you'll notice. Um, we found that um, in user research, um, that there was users who had been on MCOL and on paper as well, and actually issued claims against themselves. And then HFZTS. To put that right, charge you another fee, charge you an application fee to, to change the name of the defendant to the actual defendant's name. Um, it was just confusing to people, they weren't familiar with the terms payments defendants, um, so we actually amended our wording uh, to make it a lot clearer. So about you and this claim, we'll say we're an individual <coughs> in this instance. As for our details, so title, first name, last name. Incidentally, this is just a prototype. This is, I'm not going to issue a claim against, or I'm not Mary Richards, clearly. Um, so it's just for demo, uh, demonstration purposes only. Um, so I'll put in my title, first name, last name, put in my postcode, and it'll use uh, postcode lookup software to actually find that address. I can add a different address for correspondence, should I wish, and then save and continue. My date of birth, so I can put my date of birth in there, confirm that I'm over 18. Telephone number, so that's for our operational team, so they, if they need to speak to the claimant, um, we, can, um, we can give them a call. And then their details, the person you're issuing this claim against, so the defendant. Uh, again, removing that. Um, complicated terminology uh, for our let's go to person. So another individual, um, let's not issue it against ourselves please Clem, because um, that's what we're, we're trying to avoid. <laughs> Excellent. So again, the address within England and Wales. Again, I can add a correspondence address if I wish for the defendant. <coughs> email address is optional, as I mentioned earlier in the slides. If we have got an email address, as well as posting this claim form once it's been issued, we will also send a good notify email um, to the individual, um, inviting them to register and obviously respond to the claim. Telephone number, if we've got it, we can add that in there. Do we want to add another defendant? We're going to say no. As I said, this is the demo version. Currently only possible to issue against one defendant within this service. This being a demo, we've sort of tried with new features. Obviously, we are looking to expand to multiple uh, defendants. That's uh, a bit of a sneak preview there for you. Um, our claim amount. So we put in our details, we put the defendant details, and then what it is we're claiming for. And we're actually breaking that down. Um, so it could be sort of multiple invoices different dates, things like that, and they can actually sort of build their claim uh, value up um, within the, the fields there, uh, as Clem's doing for us now. And we can see at the bottom, it totals up as we add, um, add, the, add the lines. Do you want to claim interest? Yes or no? And you see there, a bit of text there, help with interest rates, really confusing um, for this in person. Uh, we'll say yes. Sorry, there's a help with interest rate, so we can say, um, so we know that it's 8%, or well, unless we've got a contractual uh, rate, something like that, and claim a higher amount. <coughs> so we're going to say yes, we do want to claim interest. Then how do you want to claim interest? Is it from the same date? So, you know, from the date of issue, your interest is accruing, or do you need to break it down for different uh, periods, times, etc.? So it could be done with multiple invoices, interest starts accruing from different times, for example. 
We'll just say same rate for the entire period. We're going to claim the 8%. And we're going to claim it from the date we submit in our claim. So our claim amount there, it's then added or calculated our interest. It's also told us what the claim fee is. Those who are familiar with the year at 50, you'll probably find that it's not £70, which is a £384 claim. Again, just a bit of demo service, but the fees are built in. It stops. Um, I think in paper, actually, the main reason for a paper claim form being returned to a customer is because the fee's incorrect. It doesn't surprise me you've seen that the X50 claim form. This gets rid of that altogether. The service will calculate the fee payable and make sure it takes the correct fee. We then go on to explain that even though you're paying this issue fee, there may be other fees that you have to pay further down the line. So we mentioned particularly there the hearing fee. And then we also give uh, the fees table underneath as well. <coughs> Completed our claim out. The claim details, this is our particulars of claim. To briefly explain why we're claiming this money. Free text box. We just expanded there saying don't give us a timeline, we'll ask for that separately. That's something we changed. We did say briefly explain your claim and people decided to be more and peace in there that was going on for ages and then we get to the next day we said now give us a bit more information mm -hmm. and it was really winding our users up. So you know based on that feedback we, we, you know, we can really quickly change uh, and improve the service. Timeline of events. This has proved um, really popular with our users. Probably with both sides as well, so you know, as a claimant you can really break it down and really focus on well, what are the events leading up to this money becoming gold. But then as a defendant, when you're responding <coughs> um, to this claim, you can see the claimant's timeline of events and you can add your own timeline of events. So in effect you can kind of respond, respond to each uh, particular event within there. Just helps them narrow those issues that, uh, which are outstanding. Any evidence you may have in support? So we're only asking them to list at this point and to drop from a, uh, select from a drop down list. We're not asking for any evidence to be uploaded currently because for all we know this could be issued, this could be settled within two hours with our good notify, etc. So what we don't want is to be holding on to a load of evidence, etc. that we need. Uh, that we don't need, sorry. Uh, what we will be doing is to look to uh, build in a uh, document upload facility to allow users to actually upload that evidence, but only when we require it, so you know, prior to the hearing, for example. So our claim details, and then it just tells us what happens next as well, because what we found a lot of the telephone calls and customer contact we received within Nations ETS is I sent you this claim a week ago, what do I need to do next? Because we're not very good at telling people what happens next. We'll take the money and then wait until we contact it. Um, so it does, um, you know, it does generate an awful lot of customer contact. Whereas here, we're telling them, right, okay, they've now got until 4 p.m. on the 30th of March. So 19 days, I think. Um, so, it, you know, hopefully giving them that information up front, it's just making it really clear that, you know, that what, what the next stage is. There's a button there to go to their account. Um, so if they go to their account, the claimant will get a dashboard so they can see the status of that claim. They can see, um, see we've got a couple in there, we've got one in draft, and we're currently waiting for that defendant to respond on the second, see the date of issue, we can view the details, we can download a further copy of the claim form if we wish. And what we'll do as soon as that defendant responds, we'll send an email to the claimant so you do some activity on your account, have a log, you know, log in and see, see what's happened. And if that's a defence, if it's an admission, it's a part admission, the claimant can actually see that response from their dashboard, you know, pretty much in real time really, as opposed to waiting for five days for it to come to us and then five days for us to follow copy it and send it back to the claimant, etc. So hopefully, you know, it is going some way to really speed up the, the entire process. As a defendant, <clears throat> we'll just have a look. Um, as a defendant, this is uh, one of those good notify emails that I mentioned. So we've also sent the paper copy at this point. Um, but if we have got the email, we'll email them and invite them to actually log into the service, register, confirm they are who say they are, and then respond to the claim that way. And again, from the defendant's perspective, 
That's very similar. But this is where they go ahead um, and respond to the money claim. So you see there, deciding we need more time to respond, that's the acknowledgement of service, next for 14 days uh, in which to prepare their response. So you know. If we've said yes at that point, insert that they claim that it's pinged an email, the event has been given an extra 14 days to respond. Their dashboard is updated, it's given the revised response date, so again they're not chasing us for you know, an update, etc. Confirm their details and so on. <coughs> we then obviously want the defendant to make a response to your defence admission, part admission. Something that we've um, also built in, which we've been really happy with, is um, we're also giving the defendant an, um, the opportunity to make an offer to settle this case. Um, obviously, we need the response, defence, or, or whatever. Um, but we, once they've submitted that response, we say, do you want to make an offer to settle? So we've got their sort of statutory, if you like, the, the legal response to prevent the CCJ being issued uh, in default. But then we're saying, well, do you want to make an offer to settle, which doesn't always have to be monetary. Um, I think one of the first ones we got, it was around something to do with a second-hand car, and the offer from the defendant was, I'll take the car, I'll do the work that's necessary, I'll get it through its MLT. No money changed hands, but both sides was happy. So we, we, we asked the defendant if they wish to do that, obviously they don't need to, um, it, it's entirely up to them. If they do, when we um, notify the claimant that defence, admission, etc. has been filed, we'll also tell them that the defendant has made an offer to settle. If the claimant accepts that offer, it results in a settlement agreement, as you'd see or you'd expect to see uh, following small claims mediation. Um, I think we've had around 150, 160 maybe claims settled through that new tool. It is still new, it's still early days. I know at 54,000 it's a really small percent. Um, but you know, it's working, it's been successful for those people. Um, and you know, I'm sure we have still got work to do to you know, improve that improve where it sits within the journey, etc. That's where we're up to, um, the civil money claims. <coughs> um, obviously we'll, we'll take questions um, towards the end. Um, I think I'll hand over to Jeff, give you a bit of an update on civil enforcement.